Although we have already examined the basics of how state sets work, and also looked a little bit at how they can be used in a 3DS Max pipeline, one thing we haven't considered up to this point is just how we save our rendered images or image sequences to disk whilst using state sets. To follow along as we take a look at how to do just that, open the outputting from state sets.max scene file from your working files folder. What we have here is a fairly simple scene that has a few states that have already been set up and now need getting ready for outputting. To take a look at these, let's right click in the viewport and select Manage State Sets. In the tree view, you can see we have two geometry passes that have been set up to create foreground and background elements, along with an ambient occlusion pass that will just give us a little something extra to work with. At this moment in time, the tree view doesn't have any output path showing for the states. This is because we may need to enable this option manually. To do so, go to the States menu and just click on the Render Outputs option. This adds a new interface element down at the bottom of the tree view, with some output defaults already set up for us. As we should expect, by default we are currently being pointed straight to our Working Project folder, as we can see in the first part of the output path. Then, we have two tokens already inserted that essentially give us both a folder and an image title, both of which adopt their names from each of the states that have been set up. The image name also has an added suffix of underscore output appended, which oftentimes we may want to either delete or replace with something we find more descriptive. If we are rendering an image sequence, this will also have a numerical sequence appended to it, denoting the rendered frame number. We can of course switch away from rendering to the project folder if we so desire. Any folder on a drive can quite happily be used. When everything is set up the way we want it, we just click the Set Path option. All we need to do then is come up to the States menu and select the Render All States option. Each pass will now render in turn. And once everything is done, I can just pull up our Project's Render Output folder in an Explorer window, and as you can see, we have our TGA files nicely saved. Of course, we may want to make use of a different file extension for our output files, such as maybe OpenEXR. If we do, we can just select the extension, type EXR instead of TGA, and then click the Set Path button, just to lock the changes in place. All we need to do then is select Render All States from the States menu once again. Now when we check the Render Output folder, we see a set of EXR files. One thing we didn't get on initializing the render, however, was the opportunity to set any of the EXR options that should be available to us when rendering these out of 3ds Max. This currently is a bit of a problem with the state set output controls. We can, however, use a bit of a hack to work around things if we want to. All we need to do is save an image out of 3ds Max using one of the standard save options, such as clicking the save button on the rendered frame window. In the dialog, save out a file entitled temp.exr. And as soon as we click save, the setup options will appear. Any options we set here will essentially stick and then be applied to the output from our state sets. Whilst working a little different from standard 3ds Max image output methods, I'm sure you'll agree that rendering files, passes and elements to disk using state sets is still a pretty straightforward process. In fact, if we make use of 3ds Max's companion compositing application, aptly named Composite, then we will already be familiar with the concept of using tokens to describe elements of an output file path. 